that, uh, as I said, for us in our country, education is a very big uh, 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 task in the nation, a big goal and activity. Uh, and today's computer education in, in India, I don't think it's really anything much to write home about. Pretty much, I'll come back to that, pretty much things as they were introduced in the early 80s, late 70s, I don't think we have done too much changes in that. So there is a need to, uh, you know, improve the curriculum, improve the teaching of computer science in India, uh, and there we believe open source can contribute a lot. So I'll just, I have a separate slide on that because I think that's very important. Um, yeah, this was saying that uh, uh, when we produce 400,000 uh, computer scientists every year, the conventional way of a knowledgeable professor lecturing to a class and taking answers from the questions from the class, they don't work because we don't have those many qualified teachers, right? So we need to be absolutely innovative in how do we, the whole process of teaching learning uh, because our numbers are so very large. And there we believe that many of these uh, aspects of open source software movement can be integrated into a serious uh, uh, revision of uh, computer education. We are just looking at it, we have some initial uh, first time results, but it's quite a you know, large challenge. And that's something where we expect whole global community can help us in doing that. Uh, uh, because there are lots of experience that they have piece and bits and pieces in Europe, in US, of uh, uh, you know, using open source methods of uh, uh, education and learning. Uh, and uh, so we have the other part, what's called the non-formal part of human resource development. Formal part is what you teach in a university, what I've been talking about here now. The non-formal part is, well, for example, we conduct a training program, and anybody can come register for the training program. And this could be you know, one week training program, one month training program, and so on. Uh, uh, and we give a certificate, OK, so and so is you know, certified, is you know, expert in uh, Moodle, for example, and so on. Uh, the other thing is that we only have a certification program. Don't have, these are actually two different things. One can do training alone, one can do certification alone. What you started is that we conduct certification examinations. So anybody who has expertise could be a, graduate of university, anybody can come, take that examination, they give a certificate saying that so-and-so has passed, that would sort of help him to or her to find a job in industry, as well as helps the industry to figure out, okay, is this guy's knowledge certified? And because we are a university, a state university, our certificate has a fair amount of value in the country. And that's something we just uh, started now. And we also do it for industry specific, like an industry comes to us saying, can you do this? Uh, we can conduct that. For example, right now we are doing that with this, uh, uh, with this Kerala unit, which trains open source software. We just started a certification program for them. So uh, I guess, yeah, now coming to this larger issue of an ecosystem, which as I said, is something that we learned in the process of doing this. Uh, is that, uh, so if you look at India, okay, where are we in terms of open source? Uh, there's a fair amount, large amount of consumption of open source. I'm told, somebody told me that one of the largest downloads on any of the open source thing comes from Indian region, right? So uh, a volume of use is very large in absolute terms. And I guess these are the people who are using. We don't have statistics on any of these, but mostly it would be these segments that you use. And the problem, of course, is that uh, this is ad hoc and individual based. Absolutely, there are no policies, almost no policies, except in corporates, you know, where Infosys decides to, you know, they have a policy on open source because when they want to use open source, they should have to define very clearly where they use it or not use it. The rest of them don't really have uh, policies on that. And of course, this is another problem with in India. There is a fair amount of unlicensed software floats around fairly large amount, I'm afraid. And so the joke in India is that when we go and tell somebody this is free, somebody says, I'm already using free software. Right? So uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's true, I mean, in some sense, we realize when we, in our work, that it's really there. Right? Uh, and uh, human resource development, yeah, very little in the formal process, really. It's what we have started probably the first time this kind of thing was being done. But it left to individuals. There are training institutes which does that. The point is that uh, there is a fairly large pool of software engineers. Um, the number can be very large. It's not really. And uh, there are uh, businesses that are driven by FOSS, as again, who use FOSS products, which of course everybody else, everybody else uses FOSS products. Whereas there are not too many here, and since okay, this is an open source business, successful open source business, like some of the stories that we heard before, there isn't anything in India. Uh, they're mostly struggling to survive. Um, again, this becomes an issue because, you know, an SME trying to cater to a small company 
uh, they find that okay, the company is already using uh, this. So there's a challenge there. And government has, yes, politically, ideologically, there is some part of the government which is favorable to open source. Uh, uh, in theory, they will say, yeah, yeah, we must be using open source and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, they are very ill-informed, awfully ill-informed as to anything about software for that matter or about open source software. And they also vacillate, they're subject to pressures. You push, they say, that, that go that side and they push from that side, like I guess most governments. And there are no policies or guidelines. Uh, that's a fact that even though the government is funding us this project on open source, there is still no policy on open source. Uh, um, right, and there is a community, a fairly large community in numbers, well informed and growing, voluminous, uh, voluble, I'm sorry. Uh, but they themselves are fragmented and uncoordinated uh, with rather limited public impact in terms of uh, the impact the community is creating on that. Right? So uh, this is a position now that there is an awareness all around, including government, which is why we get such good money for doing things like this. Uh, but it doesn't yet have an impact in any domain. If you look at, for you say education, what's the use of open source? I don't think uh, it is anything significant to talk about in any sector, government use and so on. Uh, right, let me take another one minute, two minutes, I'm done. Is it okay, sir? Another two minutes? Yeah, right. Um, uh, so if you look at who are these players uh, in the space and what their roles are, and I'm added this, what are the dependencies? Because there's something we discovered that uh, it's not enough to say this party has to do this, this party has to do this. Ultimately, they have to all work together connectedly, right? So that's why I mean dependencies. If you look at the government, of course, government, at least in countries like mine, uh, they are the people who have money, uh, large amounts of money. Uh, so they can fund. They, of course, decide our policies. Uh, and, of course, as somebody mentioned before, uh, uh, in India, too, uh, government is one of the major users of open source. Uh, any software for them, sorry, not open source, any software, right? So they can do this. They can support, uh, you know, through these means. But in turn, you see that, okay, if you keep on saying, look, government should do this, government should do that, uh, uh, it can't do anything by, too much by itself. It needs support of other players. Like, for example, even if government decides to say, okay, I want to use this open source application in this uh, uh, you know, open source solution in this application, unless there is some enterprise, there are companies there which comes forward and say, okay, I can do that. And in the eyes of the government, they look respectable enough. Unless that happens, government cannot, uh, you know, place an order on that company, right? In, uh, 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 I'm not here to defend government particularly, but I can see the difficulties that they have in giving an open source contract to somebody when the company, you don't know the company will be there around. Uh, after some time. So, uh, uh, you know, it requires, for example, policy inputs. I told you because government is uh, very ill-informed, so unless it gets policy inputs, but implementable policy input. As you know, government, uh, not everything is implementable. Some things are implementable. So very specific inputs are required uh, for the government to be effective. It's a very exasperating thing to work with government. I'm sure my friend here, Professor Nagarjuna, will tell you he was on the committee to create that uh, standards. And, but beyond that, it's very difficult to do. But we should realize the limitations of what is it that government can do, right? Similarly, academy, are like, that's of course me, right? Uh, we can do a lot in terms of training people and became aware, but I can do that only if these guys whom I teach, they find jobs, right? Uh, my head of the department says, ah, you want to teach all this, but will that help them to find jobs? I better say that yes. I mean, if, they, if it doesn't help uh, placement or uh, future career of students, a uh, professor cannot push something down the throat of students just because you want uh, fancy for that, right? So if there are no industry which is willing to employ, then academia has not too much that it can do. Mm, uh, and that really is a part of the story today. Uh, not very large part, but a small part of the story. Uh, similarly, if you have industry and businesses, right, uh, industry and businesses can use open source only if there are markets for it and they get manpower, they have to get investment, they have to be appropriate policies. So while, uh, you know, industry and business ha can play a major role, right, uh, they can do that only if this is in place. Similarly, open source community, uh, uh, it, it does, you know, conducts campaigns, lobbies with policy makers, and it actually develops technologies themselves, right? Uh, but again, there's a limit to what they can do because most of it is voluntary effort, you know. E even if, for example, if a professor is in, a member of community, that professor has to do his or her work, this on top of that, right? So it's very difficult to sustain voluntary effort for very long unless it produces some ref result and there's some support forthcoming, there's a recognition of that. So uh, the point I'm trying to highlight here is these players 
all need support of each other. Left to themselves, I can keep on blaming the government that they are doing nothing about it. Or I, you can say the academy has entirely